This is spinach. Say hi, spinach. Hello. <laughs> That's my girl. She's so strong. This is spinach. Spinach is my current obsession and she has a couple different congenital conditions going on. I always say my favorite kittens to take on are kittens who have something going on that's totally new to me, and she has a couple of really interesting conditions. She has a condition called pectus excav... pectus excav... pectus ex... Why am I so bad at saying this right now? Pectus excavatum. Got it. Pectus excavatum is also called funnel chest, and it's where the rib cage and sternum are abnormally shaped, and it can make it difficult for them to have proper space for their heart and their lungs. So some kittens who have pectus excavatum as they grow will have cardiac issues or respiratory issues. Spinach also has a congenital condition called eyelid agenesis, where her eyelids are not properly formed. Sometimes kittens can have multiple congenital conditions like this, and it just means that they're extra special. When I found out the shelter had a kitten who had pectus excavatum, I was really excited because I'd never worked on a case like that before. Uh, but I knew that I was gonna have to consult our veterinarian to find out what treatment was gonna look like for her. So I asked the shelter if they could send over some radiographs so we could see what we were looking at. So I got the x-rays, forwarded them to the vet, and she said, wow, this actually looks really urgent. Not only was Spinach's chest misshapen, but there was actually a free-floating bone at the bottom of her sternum, and it was pointed upwards towards her heart. This was like a ticking time bomb. My veterinarian sent it along to a surgeon who agreed that this was really urgent and that she needed to have emergency surgery right away. So Spinach was only three weeks old and under a pound when she had to go immediately over to the vet hospital for a procedure. The two vets worked together and they came up with a plan that involved sewing down into her rib cage and pulling the bones forward by attaching them to an external chest plate. So what they would do is actually fix a chest plate onto the outside of her body that would be attached and pulling those bones forward, kind of creating more space for her heart and her lungs, bringing that rib cage forward, and also attaching that free-floating piece so that the whole thing is one properly shaped rib cage. This is a really dangerous procedure, especially in a kitten who's so small and so young. They had to get creative about what to use to make that external chest plate. So they actually took a large syringe and cut it and drilled into it. And that was what she would wear on her chest. And at the end of it, she looked amazing. These vets are truly miracle workers. Dr. Rachel and Dr. Norris together gave her such an incredible gift by taking a chance on such a young kitten and by working so delicately with her. After the surgery, they wrapped her up and gave her a little superhero outfit, which I thought was quite appropriate because actually my nickname for spinach is Iron Girl. I call her Iron Girl because Iron Man, the Marvel superhero, has a piece of metal pointed towards his heart and he has to wear a chest plate to protect him. And just like him, she had to go through the same thing. She had a sharp piece of bone pointing towards her heart and at less than one pound, she had to have this procedure where she would wear this protective chest plate for the next three weeks. So that's why I call her my iron girl. Aren't you? You're the iron girl. She seriously is like a superhero. What an incredible incredible thing to overcome at such a young age. And her spirits were really good. We kept her at the vet hospital for a couple of days so that they could monitor her and put her on really good pain meds because this is not a comfortable thing for a kitten to go through. We wanted her to feel safe and comfortable and like she had all of the medication that she needed. What are you doing? No, you can't come out. After a couple of days, one of their technicians generously delivered her to my home. She dropped her off in a little plastic tub and that began her foster adventure. Aww. There she is. Oh man, she looks like she's doing great. Aww.
Now caring for a kitten who has just had pectus excavatum surgery does involve making sure that the chest plate is looking good, that you're changing bandages, and you have to keep the whole chest plate contained because this is something that she could easily mess with or get caught on something. So I was instructed to unbandage every couple days, take a look at everything, rewrap it, and then wrap the entire thing tight to her body so that she's not able to harm herself or get it caught on anything. Now, that's a lot of wrapping. So the solution that I came up with was that every couple of days I would unwrap the bandage, take a look, apply new bandage, and then put a little t-shirt over her. But of course, it's hard to find t-shirts for one pound kittens. So instead, I made her all of these wonderful outfits out of socks. She had a lot of different awesome sock outfits. She had tropical socks, watermelon socks. Uh, one day we even wore matching mother-daughter outfits. I had my taco mask and she had her taco outfit. And now she's finally about a pound and a half, which means she can fit into a ferret t-shirt. This is her polo t-shirt. It's designed for ferrets. It's amazing. I tried to buy a bunch of like guinea pig and rabbit t-shirts, but they're too big for her. But it turns out a ferret t-shirt fits her just right. Now I should say for the record, it's very cute, but please do not dress your cat or your kitten up in a sock or in any other kind of outfit. Cats don't like being constrained by clothing, so unless there is a medical reason for doing so, you really should not have your cat um, getting dressed up like this. She needs to be in this because it's protective of her chest and it is helping her as she recovers from her chest surgery, but I can't wait until the day that she can take it off. So since I knew spinach was gonna be all alone, I really wanted to get her a friend, and right around the time that we took her in, I was asked if I'd like to take in another special baby who was also a solo orphan. That kitten's name is Chickpea. All right. Oh, hi. Hi. Hiya. Nice to meet you. Oh, she's great. <laughs> she's really cool. You think you can just come in here and be that cute? Right off the bat? Uh-uh. Chickpea is also a very special kitten. She has a condition called a class two malocclusion. And if you've followed me for a while or if you've watched my video on overbites and kittens, you already know what that means. Oh, someone got the overbites? You got the class two malocclusion? You're just like Gooseberry Jr. A class two malocclusion is a severe overbite, and in kittens, that can cause their bottom teeth to puncture their palate. So in a couple of weeks, Chickpea is going to need dental surgery to extract those bottom teeth. I thought this was a very fitting pair. Two little special babies who both need surgical procedures who could really comfort each other throughout that. Do you see her down there? That's Chickpea. That could be your friend someday, maybe. Chickpea, look who it is. That's another friend. That could be your buddy, potentially. But of course, I always do a minimum two week quarantine to make sure that everybody's healthy and that it's safe to introduce them. So for the first two weeks they were here, all they could really do was see each other from a distance and look at each other through the playpen longingly. What in the... Oh my God, her belly. Who the heck is that? 
Who in the hecky? What in the? What? There's other life on Earth? Who the heck? What in the world? Who is that? Okay, spinach. Here's chickpea. What do you think? And she's really obsessed with Andrew. That's my girl. I feel like Chickpea is Andrew's foster kitten and Spinach is my foster kitten. Uh, Spinach and I are super bonded. We sleep in the bed together. You're so sweet. You're so sweet. She has peed the bed a couple times. Not gonna lie. But she's cute. Can't argue with that. That's okay. We all pee the bed sometimes, right? Right, guys? <laughs> I don't really pee the bed, but if you do, it's okay. Anyway, now that spinach and chickpea are friends, they are like two peas in a pod. They are so, so cute. They do everything together. They snuggle together. They go on adventures together. They climb. They play. They love each other. And it makes me so happy because both of them have had to go through a lot and both of them will have to go through more and they'll have each other. So today was a huge day for spinach because this morning she had her two specialty appointments at the hospital. She was seen by an ophthalmologist who looked at her eyes and she was seen by a veterinarian who did follow up radiographs of her chest to find out if she is able to get that chest plate off or not. The ophthalmologist confirmed that yes, she does have eyelid agenesis, but that it is not so severe that she'll need reconstructive surgery. She's able to open and close her eyes and see totally fine, but because her eyelids are underdeveloped and misshapen, the eyelashes are actually going inwards and pressing against her cornea. So unfortunately, she will need a procedure for her eyes, um, and that procedure is called cryoepilation. Cryoepilation is where they freeze the hair follicles so that the eyelashes um, don't grow anymore, and that's something that she'll be able to have done in a couple of weeks. So unfortunately, it's not the end of your surgical journey, Miss Thing, but she's a very strong girl, and I know she'll do great. Now the really good news is, you ready? You ready? Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. No more chest plate! Her chest is totally, totally normal now. It's shaped properly. The surgery worked incredibly. She has amazing space for her lungs and her heart, I know. And she really wants to mess with her little scabs, which is why she still has to wear a t-shirt. But, oh my gosh, they did an amazing job. Look at that. No more chest plate. I mean, she's been wearing that for more than half of her life now. So she does still have to wear the t-shirt. She's like, oh, let me nibble my chest. We're not gonna nibble right now, girlfriend. Now eventually that will all heal up perfectly and she won't have to wear the t-shirt anymore. But until then, it's spinny fashionista time. And Lord knows I have a variety of guinea pig t-shirts and rabbit t-shirts that will fit you for as long as we need. So that's Spinach, she is awesome. She is so, so wonderful. Yes, she has a lot going on, but who doesn't have a lot going on, right? She's a strong and sweet girl and she is my favorite little buddy right now. So thanks for watching.